one, it was expected to be a very interesting premier division of the secondary schools football league, the Tiger Tank Secondary Schools Football League. I must good mark work along with former national player Sid Gray. Sid, um, back to your days. When you got to play the first game of the season, what do you think going through these players' minds? I think they might be a bit nervous because after after see after two years of hiatus of no football, mm. I think it might be a bit nervous to these guys coming back into the school football here. And I think it will be an interesting game today. It should be a, a very interesting one indeed. It's also a, a, a game that if you had to, to start a season against an opponent. I think both of them would probably prefer to be playing this side, Carpe China, playing space side, space side, playing Carpe China, because quote-unquote, these are not the big boys of the competition. So I you can get your feet wet a little bit. And I think this will be an interesting game for both teams, because as we see, they are not so-called big names. And it will start off with someone that you feel maybe along your, your, your level, your level mm -hmm. will be nice to get a, you know to get your feet wet into it and, and move on into the competition well andrew samuel is the man in the middle he is the referee working along with karen mayers and sash ramsarup they, they are the two um referees assistants so to speak so the two captains both of them that were in the numbers six and uh, uh which is a little bit unusual but that is the situation today and uh, uh gabriel perestin from space side and uh, of course the, the man isaiah joseph out of carpichaima east secondary i said look at the conditions this is perfect for football this is magnificent the feet playing surface is very nice cut very no, low and i think this should be a great game because of the surface is very nice and and, and not too wet and not too hard this is a perfect condition to be playing football on well, it certainly it is, and uh, well, the officials are getting into position, so we should be on our way any moment now, and uh, we'll have the start of the season for both of these teams. It's what they've been waiting for as, as a young man. You, you look forward to the start of the secondary school season, and uh, you obviously we want to do well and i think all the players here would want to do well i saw some of these players in the tiger tank on the 20s as well as the next level um, community cup competition uh, so they had some football they probably didn't have the amount they would like playing together as a unit so we see um, how it shapes up for them uh, but like i said things are in their favor they have a nice surface on which to work and the opponents are not daunting or overwhelming for them at this point in time beautiful weather here today yep. cool and we should be having a lovely day of football we like to see who will start off the fastest here today well, and that, control and this game yeah that's going to be the important thing who could can who could set the tone um you know quite often in secondary schools football some teams take a while to settle down they um, they, you know, they t maybe it's just the jitters because not everybody's at the same level, and that is the beauty of secondary schools football. Some players are a little more advanced than others, and they kind of bring them along as the season, um, you know, as they go through the season. And I think the most experienced one will be the one to be taking the team forward. Right. And, and it's, but it happens so much, and you know, you you look forward. Uh, in fact, I always used to say, I I always have to tip my head to Bertil because. Sometimes when you see his teams initially, they're probably you're wondering what Bertil trying to do. But when you see them by the end of the year, by the time the intercall comes around, uh, you know, they're right there, thereabouts. And um, it's a tribute to his coaching, but it's also a testament to the, the kind of the philosophy and the methodology that goes into it, that he could bring along some players, players who you don't think would do anything. And that's the beauty of being a coach. And being a coach, when you could bring a guy from one level to another level that is the reward of a, of a coach and i have to give mr sinclair the testament of that he has brought players along from from lower level and brought them up to a higher level of standards and he's one of those coaches uh, not the only one but he's one of those age is not a factor with him <laughs> if you're capable <laughs> you will play <laughs> you know he don't mess around with that and uh, you know he i don't think he even sees age you just see the ball and man. Yep. You know, and, uh, which is a, a good philosophy to have because 
uh, what you know some of the, the the exciting young players, and that is what secondary schools football has done over the years. It has really been able to unearth talent, and uh, you know most of our secondary school stars have come through this. You know have gone on to national team uh, duty and, and international football. Um, so. People could say a lot of things about the secondary schools football, about the standard and or the lack of a stand, whatever it is. The bottom line is most of the players who play international football for Trinidad and Tobago have had their grounding or their genesis in the secondary schools football. And then they go on after that. I mean, I'm standing right next to somebody who went through that. So he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Well, this is a starting point. You know, you have the lower level and then you have this level and... I think after this should be going somewhere international. Mm -hmm. and that is uh, kind of that is the pathway, if you know what I mean. That is the you start here and you build, you know. And you, you could name them the Latapies, the Yorks, you name it, the Gislops, everybody who's going on to do great things for Trinidad and Tobago. Ninety-nine percent of them would have had their, people would have seen them for the first time at this level, playing for their respective institutions and uh, really excelling and doing things. David Nakid is another one who came out of this system. Now that is our farm system, but that is also the kickoff for this. So we're finally on our way here in uh, this one and uh, Space Island, of course, trying to build from the back and uh, get themselves into positions early. That's not a bad ball or not, not a bad attempt at it. But again, this is the, the, the question here. How quickly can they settle and do the things that they want to do again the ball just changing hands a little bit quickly and uh, but now they're now trying to certainly put things on this is not a bad effort that is or should be an infringement it is in fact an infringement a little trip on Trotman and I think this is in a very dangerous position just outside this, the 18 yard box this one could be very dangerous Depends on who is kicking. Trotman is going to take it himself. So he has uh, sort of pulling away from him. Holder has come to the out wide to the left, but he, he has uh, three green shirts in there. I'm surprised they haven't sent another player in there unless he's going straight at goal. Uh, but I, I would have, I would imagine they would think of putting somebody else. Uh, as it look, looks like it look like he's going straight. There he goes with a shot on goal, on target as well. But it just bounces and take all this thing out of it. Easily clutched there by goalkeeper Thomas. And quickly, the ball changing sides. And uh, uh, just at the nick of time, he's able to get the touch on it. But now trying to bring it out of the back. Trying to be composed with it. Um, Mayors, but the pass again floating away the holder find himself in an offside position I think he, the ball just changed and you should have been back into your half so the free kick not a particularly strong one, but again, it's just a lot of bonks in the area there. Now coming over with his top in. He plays a lovely ball forward. This could be danger here for the boys from Capitone East. And it goes over the line. Goal number one. With just about two and a half minutes gone in this encounter. And the man putting his name on the score sheets there for the Tobago outfit. Getting it over the line. And... It just settled right there and it was just hammered over the goal. There is the replay. And that was a great pass. Great. There is just enough for him to run on to and have a great shot. But a great save by the goalkeeper and great following up by the striker. Uh, so again, Space I doing their business, they're doing their damage early o'clock. Here they come again. More problems here. This time, good defensive work. Speyside is looking very dangerous down the flanks. They are looking to play the ball over behind the defense of Karpi Chima here. Karpi Chima need to be very careful with those balls behind them, behind the back. So it's going to be interesting now to see how well they do it. 
ball comes across header down but it just allowed the bounce in the area and uh, it goes behind so Jaheim Trim is the man who got his name on the score sheets early just in the two and a half minutes in so an early lead for Carpe Chima and uh, many would think that might be slightly against the run of play but based on the number the kind of possession they've had they certainly hit early and here they come again they have a plan they want to get it out wide to the flanks of the field and this man trim is doing his business out here as well good composure patience being shown here by space right now and uh, now they're beginning to try to you know sort of express themselves on the ball easily handled at the back the captain Palestine. The ball is given away and luckily for space are able to get it back. That might be offside and uh, the referee's assistant flag is in fact up. But again you could see a, a sort of pattern to what space side wants to do. They, they're not afraid to play the ball, the early ball up but they're also playing them to the flanks of the field. Yes, space side is trying to play the ball behind the defense of, of, of Kaipe Chima. And they are using the speed of, of these um, flankers. Here they come again. There's another ball played for Trim again. Is running at the defense. He's giving them problems early o'clock in this one. And the goalkeeper does well. He comes and he claims it for Kaipi Chima East. Rivers. Nikolai Rivers, brave man there. Although there were defenders in the area, he was able to control it. Space side with possession again, almost caught in possession though, and uh, having to hurriedly get it away. And that's not what you want as a last stopper. You want him to control the ball and get rid of it as, as quickly, quickly as, as possible. possible. I think he is, was a bit too slow there. I think he needs to raise his head faster and play the ball into the midfield or, or over the top much earlier. But it's one to nothing to space side, so they obviously will be sitting a lot more comfortably at the moment here they come again trim almost getting that one forward battling in the middle of the park and that is a tough tackle there in fact he was his leg was extended and he almost he took the Especially for a team that has fallen behind, you know, you want to be able to uh, take advantage of every opportunity you get on a counter-attack, a quick counter-attack. When you have this quick counter-attack, you need to be quality into the box, quality balls into the box, and that is very important. Here they come again, the ball... or something yeah. and, you know everything goes at that point in time now players are trying to get some refreshments as quickly as possible
but referee Samuels is going to get things started once again. I think he's going to give it back to Kirby Chimer so them to sportingly give it back to Speyside. They do play it and uh, they almost <laughs> prized open another opportunity here. I thought he was just going to kick it down to the back to the goalkeeper. Instead they played it square and then almost uh, carved out a chance going the other way. That's a good header, trying to keep it in play, but unable to do so on this occasion. Batiste, Kylian Batiste, looks to be a very agile wing back. Very powerful youngster. Getting in the way there was the other Gray. Reyes Gray. Are there a number of Greys Se and. Uh, seems to be a lot of Gray yeah, on this piece. A, lot of, a lot of Jaheems <laughs> as well. Ball again headed away by Gray. He's a powerful man in the middle of the park there. You can see him, the number eight. And that's careless because, if, you know, coaches get gray hairs when that happens. They were almost getting through there, but they pick it up once more. Then going nicely forward again is Taylor. Again, just hit. And this could be a very dangerous play here. Still battling for it, trying, trying to get the handle on it, Humphreys. And eventually he got it away. Good movement. Good anticipation though by the defender. Just to keep him up, keep him in front of him. There's someone else down on the field again. Um, Carpe Chima. Uh, now we're seeing the referee getting... They got the referee's attention and now he's able to um, stop play and uh, allow... I would imagine he'll allow some assistance. And, uh, again, a lot of these players have not been playing. I think we can't stress that enough. And, and, and he's holding his shoulder. And that's, and that's is a problem, you know. The slightest knock will be very painful. And this is uh, Keziah Mayers. And he's in real pain here, it looks like. I hope he'll be okay. So the referee Samuels has, and uh, they're trying to put that, maybe the shoulder popped out or something, it, it happens. Uh, but play has resumed. And uh, Speyside, the men in the yellow and blue, are leading in this game by that one goal to nothing. Uh, a third minute item by Jaheem Taylor. That's the difference right now between these two teams, Jaheim Trim, I should say. Making the difference. Space side, just a little bit careless there at the back, but they still managed to get the ball out of the danger zone. And just getting it, Quinton Brooks is the man. Ball given away again. More pressure here that's a good piece of movement here he has nobody in the box though only now does he get somebody this could be opportunity here not a bad effort eventually the rebound falls to him and he puts it away quite nicely Campbell Toppin top Toppin again rather Toppin number seven uh, Jarlon Toppin this time and uh, he makes it two to nothing in the 13th minute of play I think that was a I have to say, we goalkeeping by, by the goalkeeper. I think he could have done better. I think he could have saved that one. There wasn't a powerful shot. He parried it straight back to Toppin, and Toppin just slotted away. Easy finish for Toppin. The build up, though, is what was, was a, good. It was a great yeah, build up. It was a good build up. He, he had nobody in the box, so he hooked it back to Toppin. Toppin took the first time effort. The goalkeeper probably should have saved it. And, uh, but he went down. That's what, that was probably part of the problem because he got the ball at a height. He wasn't sure if he should cradle it or if he should cup it the other direction. And his hands ended up nowhere near the ball. It hit him somewhere in the person and just bounced back to Toppin. And he, he didn't need an invite for a second chance. Here they come again, another ball. Look at how open the defense is at this point in time. That's uh, part of the danger right now for the Capuchima outfit. Ball again. Speyside is using this ball behind their defense and they are struggling. They, are, they, are, they can't cope with the pace of Speyside. 
affrontery. And 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 Ray Gray is also creating problems. Here he is. He has the throw, but he decides to leave it for his teammate. And they are enjoying the better of the exchanges right now. Here's the throw in. Again, the ball allowed to bounce. And wow, this is uh, almost a gift for the boys from Carpe Chima because the entire Spaceside team was in their own half of the field and any quick counter attack would have had everybody going in the same direction but here they come again that's good dribbling there play the ball for these offside and uh, the whistle is only a matter of time but again good ideas just trying to not do too much but just try to get the ball slip the ball forward quickly and they are playing a simple game here right now Spaceside and very dangerous they are trying to play in the ball as early forward as possible for their front tree to run on to. And that's the danger for Kaiba Chama because their defense seems to be playing so flat and so high. That's the danger for Kaiba Chama. And, uh, and that's the thing on space side, uh, they have good passes of the ball. They, they seem to know how to pass the ball. He has a ball played forward. He looks a little bit offside, but the referee's assistant allows play to continue. And... Uh, it goes to knots because it goes and it seems to have been a first change here number 21 right because i i, I think um mayors might might stay might have stayed off yeah with the shoulder injury yep nicholas tristan Nic nicholas yep. yes tristan nicholas mm -hmm. More problems here. This one played across. This is not a bad ball, but again, good solid defending here. Just doing enough to uh, hold off the uh, attack of Holder and uh, keeping it in front of him and not allowing. He considered a corner kick, but I'm sure he'd be happy with that as opposed to giving away a goal. Batiste, again, they win the ball back. Here comes Speyside again. And they're using the pace again. Speed. You seem to get in each other's way there. That's a great ball forward. And uh, still they're going with it. But the referee's assistant was on spot. And uh, he saw Trim in an offside position. But it was such a nice ball between the defenders. The control probably wasn't what was I, needed. I think, I think a better control and he would have been in. Straight, straight, to, goal. In, straight to goal. But it was such a, a good ball. F again, from the flanks. Into the, def into into the, the heart strikers. of the defense. Yep. You know, they're, they're not afraid to play the ball. And you could see it's a deliberate ploy. They're, they're playing it, and they're playing it early. Uh, they don't have to go down to the, you know, to the corner flag to make crosses. They're doing it in their crosses from almost everywhere. Great header. And uh, just trying to, to get it back there. Now they're able to get possession once more. Trim plays it back. And again, the touch not the best on that occasion. But eventually, it's uh, played up field by Parisian. Still, the ball allowed to bounce, and that is always the danger. Because a ball uh, an attempt at another good ball inside is still battling for it, and he does well. He picks it up. He now has movement down this right hand side here. Great. Can he get the cross in? Can he dribble his man? That's more the important thing here now because it's 1v1. Still trying to go there, but then the defender. He's trying to keep get on his right foot on <laughs> his strong <shock> side. <laughs> <laughs> the defender got the better okay. of him, Isaiah Joseph. Taken quickly, the return ball is he's offside. It's just a little too early on that occasion. He never gave him time to get, get back, back on side. Yep. I think he could have taken a touch and, and do, do the crossing himself. But at least they they they're trying to include everybody oh. with their passes. They they're not afraid to, if they see it, they're making it. And um, that is good because the way the defense is playing, you never know. Somebody could have been, you know lazy coming out on defense or something and uh, he might have been onside but on this occasion it didn't work but it's still two to nothing to space side they're leading uh goals in the third minute by jaheem trim and in the 13th by jalan toppin and uh, they're looking for more they have a throw in just inside the 
Carpet time is half and three. Carpet time in their green tops and black trousers. Under pressure here right now. Okay, here's the throw by Batiste. And uh, it's into, he gets it back though. Tries to take it down. Does he keep it in? And he, he just ran away from him. And then he hit it onto his teammate. And uh, that is Jaheem Trim. Still they're coming forward again. Lovely build up. Top in. Plays a ball inside. This could be problems here. Over oh. the ball. I think he, that was a sit out. That was one of the easiest, easiest chances that I think Spice had had. And I think he just snatched at it. He didn't need to go for power. He, he just needed to just pass that ball in. And he was dead center, center. of the goal. And that seems like a penalty for me. <laughs> yes. And uh, again, Jaheim Trim, a golden opportunity to get his second of the evening. Missing out there. All he needed to do was place it on either side of the goalkeeper. And he was in business, as they say. Ball again played up. Once more, the guys in yellow quicker to the ball. And uh, trying to keep possession now. They get it all the way back to the goalkeeper. He plays the ball square, but trying to get inside there quickly hoping to intercept it there uh, was hold up still this time Capri Chima does well to win it back and they keep it in the middle of the field now can they bring it forward not that because Trim is back there helping out on defense now they have possession in the middle and uh, looking for something that's a little bit tough, but he does well trim and to hold it in and then they get it all the way back. So again, just the communication modest, not able to link up uh, with his teammates on this occasion. There's another ball played forward and, uh, and he might have been offside. Yes, he was just a oh. little ahead. And they seem to be finding their players that easy. Yeah, Sylvan George is having a, a nice, he's a small man, but he's finding space out there. He's a bit nippy. Yep. Remind me of Mickey Rat. From Memphis days. But it's a, a, a chance now for the goalkeeper to get it upfield. Nikolai Rivers. Um, twice now he's had to take the ball out of his net. I'm not sure he's a happy man right now. It's it upfield, but again, a little push in the back, but the referee allows play to continue. Good movement here. Great ball across, but once again, the defense doing well. Kapi Chima hoping to maybe pull one back, and now they have to defend this now. Opportunity to just roll it forward. Trim decide to go back with it, and uh, he gets it in the middle of the park. Great. Moving forward. Still, Kerry Chima not able to get the ball now out of their own half of the field as Space Side come running forward once more. And there's a little fella, George, just not able to control it on that occasion. It's been all Space Side in this one. They lead by two goals to nothing and deservedly so. Control, good control, although. The goalkeeper was calling for the ball, and, uh, and this Dalim is a mix-up by yep. Space Side, and this could be very dangerous. Three and three, nice opportunity uh, great defending here. here. And here they come again. Smart ball, playing back in the middle, and uh, here he is again. Trim trying to compose himself, still going forward, and now he can play the ball. That's a great ball. Great ball. Just a little, a little too, too strong. heavy. A little too heavy. But so George, is there with off. Him. Yep. George is there with him, uh, but he dribbles inside. Nobody in the middle, though, uh -huh. and uh, that's the problem here because somebody needed to present an uh -huh. option for him and not allow him to try from that uh, almost impossible angle. I think that angle was too cute, mm -hmm. and I think he was a bit selfish there. Yep. <laughs> Way too ambitious at that angle. It was always going to be tough. That's a great header and uh, just not able to get the, that second ball but they get it now here he is again trim still going forward has an opportunity to cross it he decides to take his man on and then when he tried to cross it it's going the other way 
Back it comes now to Kapi Chaimo. They've had problems getting the ball forward in a composed manner. Now they get us this opportunity now to try and, and remedy that, but uh, an infringement in the middle of the park sees, sees them conceding another free kick to Speyside. So the, the Tobago outfit, who I felt might have been a little bit more lethargic, having to travel a further distance to get here, but they are the ones who settled uh, first, and they've continued to, to build on that start that they got. And with a start like that, I, t I don't think Lachardic will be getting into them. I think they, they, want more now. <laughs> they, they want more. Almost 25 minutes gone now. This is a great opportunity. Can he get the cross in? Hits it towards the goalkeeper over the bar. He needed to get a nice cross in. Two players was free inside the box. He could have just clipped it inside the box. He went for the shot. He, w he went for glory at that angle. I think he was a bit selfish there. Here's the opportunity. Yes. Needed to just clip that ball into the box. Kaelan Batiste, the guilty man. So again, you could see the problems for Kapi Chaima. They are having problems consistently getting the ball or, or building from the back. So they're just giving the ball away. They're just firing the ball forward and then having problems. Give me just a, a nice dummy. He, he knew that the, 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 the shoulder lean was coming. He just stayed out of the way. And uh, the little George, who is not very strong or very heavy, went flying by. Good defense. I think I ch Carpe Chima need to keep the ball a little bit and keep rolling it. That, that is a nice play by Carpe Chima. Here they come again. They're trying to get it down. Again, going over on that right-hand side now is Holder. And uh, they're hoping that he could probably break open this, unlock this defense for them. Ball one back again. Here comes uh, the boy from Capuchama, but another offsides again. So it's maybe just a little anxiety to get forward is what is causing the problems for them now. And guess who is holder once more? Ball play down. This could be a foot race. Here they go again. And getting in front of his man once more. Trim? Top, top in. Top in rather. I thought he was. I thought he was onside when the ball was played. He just ran past everybody. But the referee's assistant had a, a different idea. Yeah, I think he was a he was a, he was offside. He was just leaning and just le leaning. Just leaning. So again, and I, and I know the, the whole VAR question now is all the different anxieties. If an elbow is beyond his offside, that's a serious challenge there. It was late as well, and it just kind of laid him out there. That was a strong tackle. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's what they call a big man challenge there, these but it was late. These boys from Tobago are very physical. Tell me about it. Oh. And he stayed down. He's having a hard time getting up. You see how he was late with the challenge. And uh, the man he hit, Trotman, is also carrying a heavily bandaged knee, or leg, I should say. And uh, so that challenge doesn't help. You can see him taking his time to get up there. But he's one of the better players. And they're, they're going to need him to stay on. I think Kari Pichama needs to take the time with this free kick and deliver a good ball into the box and try to make something out of this. Well, it's the Shortman who's there. And he has Anthony Karim next to him. Goalkeeper take a three-man wall there. I think he's a bit ambitious if he's be going to goal here. Let's see what he does. He goes towards the goal and just a little beyond the far post and it doesn't get to, there were runners there uh, but it, by the time they got to the ball it was already uh, behind the goal for a goal kick to Speyside. Two goals to nothing they lead and looking comfortable but as they say uh, you get one back before the half and you're still in with a chance. You have the entire second half to maybe get an equaliser. You always say 2-0 two, two, two is a very dangerous score. Because you always feel you are up and you you, you start to get lackadaisical and, and it could be very dangerous for you. There's a case in point, but he does well to get the ball out and Great look who he gets here. it to. Yeah. 
good control once again top in trying to do a little too much he had time to control the ball and start his attack there's another strong challenge there I think Topping could have just take a touch and just roll that in and the striker would have been in try to do a bit too much there and lose lose out Percy Endo gets pulled up for that infringement so it's going to be another free kick to Kirby Chima East and I think Speyside is giving away too many free kicks around their box and this could be very detrimental to their game they need to be patient around the box when they are defending well that's one of the ways that teams can get back into a game is via uh, you know a, a free set kick please. or some kind of set play and uh, even though they're not flowing in open play but set plays if they're clinical with their set plays uh, they could cause damage and if the opponents keep giving them uh, opportunities let's see if they can take this one Trotman again with this opportunity he has a lot of green shirts at just at the edge of the area in fact there are five of them ahead of him and uh, Karim also trying to join in but what does he do now, it's a difficult area to play a chip ball but he tries to get it to the back post beyond everyone and uh, it just curled away from uh, the fast moving holder and uh, it goes behind but I uh, think if he has used his left foot to curl it back curl it it into, him. into him he used it he curled away from him space side lovely approach work just the control letting them down there right in the middle of the park there Jalen Toppin he gets it back though and uh, here they come again another ball played forward the defense uh, again having to retreat Thomas uh, George rather did well but he, they give it right back Holder Trotman gets it forward now the back to Holder and uh, He's not able to, to get to it, and that's good defensive work. Space side coming forward again down the left hand side this time. There's the ball played in. This is a foot race here now, and uh, anticipating very well at the back there was Parisian. Or rather, for, for the boy, Joseph, Isaiah Joseph, for Capuchami East. And that is a, a, a little bit of a clumsy challenge there, trying to, it's almost like a scissors kick. And I think later into this game, you will see much more of these kind of attackers when they are more tired. Because the fatty will be stepping in and they will be making a lot more clumsy tackles in, into the, in, 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 in the game. And that is probably the danger that most coaches have now, is how their teams would finish games. You know, because fitness is obviously going to be an issue. I think coming in, one expected that this could be a, a serious tussle here now. Can he get the better of, can he control the ball? He's been harassed, and now he's able to turn. Lovely ball played forward here. Another opportunity for Speyside. The ball just not getting there. Good defensive positioning and uh, getting to the ball first. But they're not out of the woods yet, Capri Chima. Speyside still have possession inside the Capri Chima half, but they give it away. And guess what? Coming back and doing very well is Jaheim Gray. Nice ball play down that, that left-hand side. They have good control. Brooks is out there. He plays the ball forward, but it's won back by Carpe Chima. Another ball played out to the flanks. And there is the little fella, George. He has a man in front of him. He plays a nice little ball inside there. Still going for Brooks. It's a left footer, but it's over the bar. Space keep getting a lot of room on these on this on these flanks. I think Carpe Chairman need to clap down on these plays coming from the flanks, both wings, right and left. And the good thing about that play is that George again saw the, the overlap wasn't on the outside this time, it was on the inside between the wing back and the stopper, and he was able to get off a shot. And that was a great run by George, I have to say. Yep. Intelligent run. Because most times you, you'd probably make it on the outside, but this time he, he went the, the direct route on the inside and he was going straight to goal. goal. So 34 minutes gone, two goals to nothing, the scoreline in favor of Speyside. And they came close on a couple other occasions to probably add to that.
That should still be that should be a throw in. It is a throw into space, eh? Two oh. players collided there, and, and again, they, I don't think they saw each other coming. And this is two Capuchama players taking out each other. No communication there. Yep. Uh, Karim was coming in, and he wiped out Modest in the process. Luckily, uh, no both of them, yeah, both of them are okay, because once you're dealing with head injuries, you have to be so careful. So a chance here now for Speyside with the throw in. The referee is pointing to one spot and the referee's assistant is pointing to another spot. So I think he has to obey the referee. Throw taken and uh, trying to turn and then just getting a touch on it. It's going to be Carpy Chimer's ball, says the referee's assistant. Rez, great. Opportunity for to get the ball forward, but they, they, they failed to do so. Still trying to get in there. He's dribbling his way through, does well. Plays a nice little ball in the first touch, not the best, but they still have possession. And that's good anticipation there by Holder. He does well. Now he goes for the return ball. Can he get something going? Finally, four happy timeout. It goes to North because it's easily won back again by a good, flexible defense on the part of Speyside. Here's the ball now. George is on his way. He's in the area. Does he have any help? Hits the post. Well, well, well. He hit with the outside of the right foot and he hit the post. He got it past the keeper and it just clunked off the post and stayed in play. Here they come again. Carpi Chima pouring uh, under pressure here now. Speyside pouring it on and uh, just not looking to relinquish their pressure. They still have possession. Looking for some movement here. Still going forward with it now. Topping. Going past one. Because he goes into the area. Cuts inside on his left foot. Sets it up nicely. Shot. Blocked by the goalkeeper. Well saved. Good intelligent football all around. And excellent goalkeeping there because that could so easily have snuck under his body. And uh, uh, again, getting the shot off was a rare great, and uh, but Capuchaimo really at sixes and sevens at the back here now, and more importantly, they have a player down at the back, and that is problems for them. Here they come now, looking to get the ball forward, but they can't because it's backward space side, and they are coming in the opposite direction again. Now the referee has spotted the defender down in the area. But this is good work again from Speyside. And you can see him change the pace. He slowed it down. He almost went to a walking pace. And then he just took off, got past his man. Unfortunately, the shot, uh, which was not a bad, not a powerful shot, but it was on target. And that was the important thing. The goalkeeper did well to block it. Yes, I, I think that was an intelligent shot, good one-time shot. But a smart save by the goalkeeper. I have to give the goalkeeper some kudos there. Although I think I have to blame him for one goal, <laughs> yes. but it seems like he's making up. <laughs> he <make> a mess. <laughs> <laughs> the man who was done was Gerard Modest. He seems to be okay while he's up walking around, uh, still getting treatment. Uh, in the meantime, the players are getting uh, a little bit of a refreshment break. Uh, 38 minutes gone, and I think referees are encouraged to do that because apart from the heat, the fact is a lot of these players uh, haven't really been playing much football and they've been, if anything, they've probably been enduring a lot of hard training uh, in recent days. Um, so they, they might be a little bit spent right now. More so the Carpe Chima team, they, they're really having it hard, just connecting, just kind of linking up with each other. And, and moving the ball. It seems like they are not in sync with each other. And uh, there, there is Mayers with a uh, sling. So his shoulder is uh, certainly out. You can see him walking back towards the Carpichama bench in a red top with, with the hand in a sling. And you really don't want to see stuff like that uh, at no time, let alone first game of the season. Still dribbling as well. He has a great ball. The goalkeeper is going to have to come and he does well. 
He might have been offside as well, but the goalkeeper could not have known that, and he did very well, uh, Nikolai Rivers. He came to the edge of the box to make that save. It's going the other way quickly. The battle is on, and I, I don't think the Capuchama players have won one head ball in the defense. In the, uh, in the, against in the, the defense, yep. yeah. Uh, it's been all gobbled up by space side big guys at yeah the, back. The, the sturdy defenders at the back and not only are they sturdy but they're very athletic they they move well and more importantly they tackle well also and uh, to put it in local palace they tackle hard here they come again doing very well that's a tough ball because it, 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 i'm not sure he would have gotten it but he does get a bite at the george Sylvan George trying to play a ball inside. That's a good opportunity now. Can they turn it back inside? He goes towards goal and it was more like a pass. I don't think he really hit it. If he was going to goal, he needed to really spank it. Then on that occasion, he just seemed to pass it. Uh, Dalrymple. But Speyside again looking to knife their way through the defense and they get a chance here of doing just that. Good movement, good anticipation. I think and he's doing a bit too much. Might be a little too strong. Yeah, he just needs to play the ball simple. simple. But he scored a goal and um, is, had a chance at another one. And he probably wants to make amends to that second one, the one he blasted over the bar. It's Jaheim Trim we're referring to, but he's had, he's had a good half. So far, here he is again, winning the ball back for his team, and he's still trying to work with it. And uh, the ball is given away, though. A uh, chance here now for Batiste to bring it forward, but he loses out. And uh, Speyside will win it back. Can they keep it, though? That's the challenge. Game a little bit scrappy right now because uh, players are just kind of slugging each other, slugging at each other and not really trying to really put the ball down and take advantage of their possession. I think they are trying to do a bit too much instead of passing the ball around. They are, they are trying to be one-man team. Mm -hmm. and the thing is, Speyside, as we said, two goals is not the best advantage. You know, all you need is somebody to slip at the back and uh, you give away a penalty or something and then it's two to one and they're right back in the game. Nice defensive work here again from Holder and Trotman gives him the ball or, or actually tell him, saying to him here yeah, look this is your reward for all that hard work you just did there to win the ball back and here he goes again and that's a tough ball that's a handled ball says the referee. Since space I need to calm the game down keep moving the ball around and they will get the opening but I think they are trying a bit too hard to impress, do, to yep. impress. Mm -hmm. holding on the ball a bit too long let the ball do the work and the game will get easier for you two goals to nothing it is right now with uh, just about 42 minutes going chance here now for Kapi Chaima once again the ball is headed away and uh, here comes Speyside looking for some movement They're a little bit slow getting the ball forward when they had such an advantage there are two men and he's offside by a mile not even close holder needs to look at that because uh, whatever opportunities they get coming forward they're going to need him to keep it going and when he's offside that just nullifies everything another ball played over to the extremities of the field trying to get it down this right hand side where they have good numbers and they're just getting in each other's way now they're probably a little too close to each other So Speyside, they were working so well earlier, all of a sudden they want to get more touches on the ball. Everybody wants to play up with the ball. Here they come. This is more like it. Opportunity for him to get the ball inside. He cuts course one man. Goes in looking for another one. Has a shot blocked by the goalkeeper. And he actually pushed it over the bar. And I think I, I, it was a great save, a good shot. But I think he had this, the cross inside the box 
for 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 uh, for, the, George. for for George for to just George. to tap to, to tap him. There he goes again. He went for the glory at a cute yeah. angle. Topping with the shot, shot. brilliant save once again and by yes. Rivers. So Nikolai Rivers keeping his team in the game here, doing very well. The young man, uh, but he has to defend this corner kick. And it must be said, his defense has let him down time and again. What do they have here now? They have five yellow shirts in the area. Space side on the on the prowl here now. Looking for another one. Trying to get it inside there, but not able to do so. Dalrymple unable to get the handle on it. Uh, but here, look at who has it back quickly. Space side, however. They do give it back. And uh, now this could be a, a bit of a foot race here now. Still going in the area. Still going. And uh, can he keep it in? He does well. But he can't turn his man there. This is good opportunity there for Tyrese David. But he's unable to finish it off. But it's good defense because although it was a mistake here with the header that went in the wrong direction, he didn't panic. He just kept his cool, kept everything in front of him. Run, run, run. And was able to push it out onto the and side of the field. And, and and run, run. It's supposed to be beat tonight. And that is very important. Another ball played down this right-hand side. This is where they've had so much success so far in this half. And uh, again... Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. run. Run, run, run. Run, run. Run, run, run. There's a chance here now. They're still going with it. And maybe an opportunity for Tuck to get the shot off. Here comes the shot, but again, it is blocked. And uh, now it's cleared away. And uh, the defender is under pressure here. And the header, what, which takes him out of the play, but it's comfortably picked up by Rivers who's trying to start it again going forward but they give it right back that on Darimple unable to control it but that's the end of the first half in this encounter two goals to nothing it is in favor of Speyside and uh, of course said quickly here two goals to nothing deservedly so they could have had more uh, but I think they'll be they'll be happy with the two goal lead. I think they, they they are happy with it with the two goal, but I think they should have done much better. They should have been a, at least three to four goals up, and two nil is a very dangerous score at half time. I think they have to be more composed at the sec in the second half, and be more clinical when they have the, these easy chances. Well, it certainly is. It has been a, a very interesting first half in this encounter, and uh, it certainly makes for an interesting second half uh, in this game where both teams
in this altered way. And, and now it's uh, important for them to uh, try to learn from that, to build uh, on that as best as they possibly can and try to make um, the best of it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's always good to, to see the players. With the, remember, these players haven't played at this level for two years. So some of them uh, might have been in Form 2, maybe even Form 3, um, when the last um, season was held uh, two years ago. And now they get a chance. So now that they're probably up in Form 4 and Form 5, um, some probably in Form 6 as well, uh, depending on the institution, uh, they get an opportunity to uh, play on and to uh, continue to represent their uh, respective institutions. That's what the Secondary Schools Football League is all about. And contrary to what most people think, the league, in essence, and I suppose a principal would tell you that, it's an extracurricular activity for these students. And, um, you know, while we, we, we put a lot of emphasis and importance on it, I think a lot of principals and a lot of teachers see it as just that, an extracurricular activity for them. Unfortunately for us here in Trinidad and Tobago, because there are not too many other avenues uh, with this kind of exposure and this kind of interest for these young players to showcase themselves, this league becomes uh, probably the main breeding ground for talent identification uh, for national teams going forward. So it's uh, always um, an interesting scenario when you have secondary schools football up and running. So uh, we'll see how the season pans out, but this is early days yet. And uh, like I said, this is the first full day of football and uh, Like I said, the teams, uh, I'm sure, will be thrilled uh, just to see, even if they don't win, but uh, coaches would want to see um, what their players, how capable their players are, and how they are able to put into practice all the things that they have been teaching them. I think we have Sid Gray down on the field. I think Sean Fuentes is also down there with him. So I think pretty soon we should be able to, 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 to hear from him. I think Sean is down there. He has a special guest with him. I know Sid Gray is also down there with him. Thanks, Ruskin, and we're back at the Atabolan Stadium for the opening round of Secondary Schools Football League action. Right, Ruskin, thanks for uh, queuing me over. Um, we're back at the Atabolan Stadium for the opening round of uh, Secondary Schools Football League action 2020 to the Tiger Tanks League. At the moment, Space High, High they're ahead of Carpachima East, two goals to zero. But we're switching things up a bit. At this point in time, I would like to introduce to you Trinidad and Tobago, one of the contestants in the Miss World Trinidad and Tobago pageant. She is Miss Canopia, Dania Dante. Dania, thanks for being with us and tell us what has brought you here today at the Atabolan Stadium. Hi, good evening. Thank you, Sean, for having me here. Um, well, my Beauty with a Purpose project is all about youth development, and I've always found that sports, especially football, has been a catalyst for the development and empowerment of our youth and Trinidad and Tobago on a whole. I've always been a huge fan of football, and I just had to be here today to see it for myself. Now that I am vying to represent Trinidad on an international scale, and these footballers are basically trying to do the same thing. They're trying to represent Trinidad and Tobago on an international scale and take it to a new level. So I'm very happy to be here. That's great for you. Tell me something, I understand as well that part of your preparations or part of your challenge includes a free kick competition. <laughs> here, believe it or not, the Miss World contestants, they have to learn how to take a free kick. So Dania may be here at the Atobolan Stadium over the next few days practicing her free kicks with Sid Gray. Um, maybe tomorrow afternoon. But Dania, tell us how excited you are for this challenge. I am super excited. As much as I love football, I'm not really that much good at it. But I'm super excited to get to learn and really develop my skills. It 
takes a lot of discipline for these boys to be out here. They've been in preparation. Um, some of the teams not too long because uh, the pandemic has caused a break in, in local football for almost three years. But they've been preparing for this. Similar to you, Dania, you've had to get yourself focused. Um, the concentration levels has to be high. Give us an idea of your regime over the past few weeks leading up to the finals in November. Well, we have constant training. We have constant stage choreography. We have media training. And we're just constantly developing ourselves and really just learning how to be better versions of ourselves every day and really getting to learn our culture and our history as Trinidad and Tobagoanians. We've been doing everything to really take this on an international scale. And finally, tell us, uh, what are your aspirations? What are you hoping to get out of this whole experience? Oh, I'm hoping to grow as a person. Obviously, I'm hoping to win the title and to represent us on an international scale, but I'm also hoping to grow as a person internally and learn more about my country because I'm really proud to be a Trinidadian and I really want to learn more about my country. All right, Dania, from all of us here at the Secondary Schools for Berlin, we want to wish you the very best in the finals in November. All the best to you. Thank you. So we're going to switch over now to a former national team defender, um, 2006 World Cup defender, Sid Gray, who I think would have a smile on his face because of the fact that the Tobago side is ahead right now at the Atabolan Stadium. Sid, you've assessed the first half. You've seen what these young boys are capable of. What do you make of the first half so far? Uh, Sean, firstly, I have, I have to say thanks for being here and to see football back again. But f um, firstly, I, I'm glad to see that the football is playing at a high level. Some part, I know I'm seeing a bit of tiredness because of the lack of preparation. I think I'm seeing from some of the teams. And from the Tobago side perspective, I think they are using the, the flanks very wisely with their, their, their front tree. And they are crossing it very early. And Konopia is, very, is struggling to cope with that. Sid, let me ask you something. It was interesting today in a press conference when Angus Eve announced his squad for the King's Cup in Thailand. There was... There's not a Tobago player in the squad. There's no homegrown Tobago players in the squad, and that question was raised. How important is it for players from Speyside and the other schools in Tobago to use this as a platform to, to push themselves further, to try to get into the national and the 17 team for the qualifiers in, in Guatemala next year, but to stamp their, their, their authority to some extent and to open the eyes of the selectors? I think they have to work a bit more hard. Uh, I think they have to believe in themselves and work much harder because I know it, we might see the other disadvantage. I would not see the other disadvantage, but I just need them to work a bit harder and put in the work to be at the national level because just playing home and, and, and mediocrity, mediocrity is not the answer. In years gone by, we were accustomed to seeing Signal Hill comprehensive in the days of Bertha Sinclair when Calvin Hutchinson and, and Dwight was on the team. Coming to Trinidad and Tobago and dominating the Trinidad and Tobago teams, we have not seen that for some time. It's good to see Space out here. They're the, they're the away team. Carpet China East to some extent. They're the home side because we're in the central region. They're from just up the road. What do you think is going to be the key for Space Side to maintain this into the second half and to take the three points? I think Space Side need to be more disciplined in the midfield and continue doing what they was doing first half, playing the ball behind Carpichama defense because they are, the defense seems to be very slow and you are having a lot of joy on the flanks and behind their defense. So they need to play play that patient game in the midfield and use the, midfield, uh, the ball over the top. That is giving Carpichama a lot of problems. On the flip side, obviously, Carbuchai means they have their work to do cut out for the second half. They would want to at least get a point from this match. What do you think are some of the things that they need to work on as we head into the final 45? Well, first of all, they have to, in the midfield, they have to try to control the midfield. Do not give space side the chance uh, in midfield. They need to out hustle them and try to play the ball fast on the, on the counter attack as well. I know Sean Cooper, he's a national and ascending coach, but uh, he's also overseeing presentation called at San Fernando. If you were one of his scouts at today's match, what would you say to him in some of the things that you've seen in this particular game so far that you know, Rahel has impressed you and has given you hope for you know, possibly selections, uh, players who can make it into the final cut for that on the 17 team? Well, what I'm seeing here today, I'm seeing enthusiastic players, players that want to play and they are happy here. And once you see players are happy and want to play the game, that is that is hope. And and that that and that is the belief that we have to get right now. And I think Mr. Cooper may have a, a tough challenge on his hand with, with some of these players that I'm seeing here today. Said so generally when you look at the secondary schools football league uh, you know the start of it uh, last weekend here, last Friday, right here at the Atabolan Stadium and the stands were filled obviously today 
it's like two away teams because uh, Carbridge Iron East, they have not drawn the crowd as yet, but I expect as the season progresses, we're going to get more people flocking to the stadiums. What does it mean for you to see, as you mentioned earlier, the youth of Toronto Tobago getting the opportunity to display themselves and to put themselves on a showcase, and as well as being able to be seen throughout the region on Flu Sports and Tiger Tanks on international TV? Well, I think the crowd has to come out, the parents have to come out, the school has to come out first of foremost, because if the school come out and give, give the players this support, I think we might see a higher level, a higher level of football as well. You know, this, this type of competition, if you can go back for us, the days when you played college football um, and your, your ascendancy to club football, I know you are a standard at Joe Public, you got your debut for Toronto Tobago in an away qualifier against Costa Rica in 2001. Um, you know, it was a baptism of fire for you, but you grew from that. Uh, what would you have to say to these players who are, you know, looking at persons like at yourself, like Brian Sancho, um, Anthony Sherwood was on the bench for, for Napoleon College as well. These guys have come through the ranks. There are players now looking up to you guys. What do you have to say to them in terms of, you know, their journey? I think they have to be patient, first of all. If you, don't, if you are not patient, you, things will blow past very fastly, but you have to be patient and work very hard towards your, 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 your job. I have to call it a job because football is a job for some most folk. And I think they, they need to do that and continue believing themselves, work hard every day, not, not once a week, every single day. On your day off, you need to be working as well. Said what I would like to say as well, I think it's for us, it's, it's good to see you out here on this platform, you know, getting into the media side of things and, and being a presenter, being a commentator, because I've not, uh, in my 20 odd years in Trinidad Tobago football, I've not seen much Tobagonians on this platform, you know, sharing their knowledge and their experience in the game. I mean, we've known about Dwight. Dwight has done, you know, punditry for, for Sky Sports and he's been out there. He's worked in Africa and he's now coaching in Australia. Obviously, Shaka Hislop, who calls himself a Tobagonian, he's on ESPN. But it's good to see persons like yourself coming out now. Tell us about the last uh, few years for you in terms of your transition from player to um, having a stadium named after you and now being an official and somebody contributing to, to football? Well, after football, I, I've went back to Tobago and I've worked in the Ministry of Education as a sports officer, doing some work there and still works there. But I have to give kudos to Chief Sixty and Vinu Anwad to, to, to bring me into his full, full some moose because um, he brought me in through the Tiger Tank on the 20 tournament and, and here I'm still working here with him. Right, great. Sid, that is so fantastic to hear. We want to wish you the best. I um, look forward to hearing you again in the second half. The players are starting to make their way onto the pitch again to resume this uh, encounter space out up by two goals to zero. So we're going to take it back to, uh, to Master Control as we get ready for the second half. Thank you very much, uh, Sean. And we're working along with Sid Green and uh, our Miss World entrant as well. And, uh, of course, uh, as you say, we have some good looks in football for a change and uh, but uh, more importantly uh, we have a good game on our hands at the moment space side leading by two goals to nothing and uh, looking like they could score a couple more Sid felt that they could have maybe tucked on two or three more in the first half already uh, but um, they didn't and uh, this is where we are it's 2-0 at the half we're getting ready for second half action and uh, uh, let me just uh, tell you that this is a a Group A encounter, and uh, the other teams in Group A are St. Augustine. S uh, well, you have Capri Chairman Speyside uh, playing here. You have Fatima College, Pleasantville Secondary, St. Anthony's College, St. Benedict's College, and uh, Naparima College. So those are the teams uh, on this half of the draw. And uh, the other half, Group B, features Trinity College, East Mokarapo, Shagornas North, uh, one of the promoted teams, QRC, Malik Secondary, Maruga Secondary, Presentation College, and Sawa North Secondary. In terms of the uh, promoted teams, well, Maruga Secondary, Fatima College, and Shagonas North are the three teams uh, that would have been promoted um, from two years ago when they earned that right then and and Sid is back with me and Sid that is always a challenge here now for these teams because especially these three promoted teams because the teams the players that got them promoted 
I probably will be graduated and, and then go on. So they never got the chance to, to taste it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> they're in the workforce right now. Yeah, they never got that opportunity to, to really um, show their ways at this level, uh, which is unfortunate for some of these youngsters. That's going to be a free kick, um, an easy one for the referee. So two goals to nothing here now. The question is, can... Capuchima get themselves up and running. They're in problems here, but the, again, goalkeeper Rivers anticipates well. You have to give him credit uh, because he has uh, really come, got off his line quickly and uh, averted danger on a couple of occasions so far in this game, and yet he's conceded twice. I think if it wasn't for him, it might have been more. Yes, he, 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 we saw a couple of good saves and um, uh, 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 actually shots on goal. And then he was also there with his legs to tidy up when the ball got behind the defense. Here they come again. Can they keep this one in? The ball across the goal. This is a, not a bad effort. A little too strong. And in fact, it's beyond everyone going all the way out for a throw in to Carpe Chima. So space side starting quickly again. Ball taken down now. Here they are trying to turn and twist and, and again Dalrymple being encouraged to get rid of the ball quickly and not dwell on it too much. I think Speyside seems to start back with the same enthusiasm that they, has, they, they have started the first half with down the flanks and into the box. Yeah, which is, which a, is a giving Carbichama a lot of trouble here today. It will be interesting to see what adjustments they make, especially on defense, to counter what it is Speyside has been able to do. More, more control again. This is good football. And he goes scampering away. Gray goes into the box. He's going there. Goes past another one. He stays down. The shot comes over the bar. Again, another goal and opportunity here. Nice little. I don't think he actually laid it off, uh, but he went down. And it was great anticipation by that man, George, Sylvan George. And uh, not able to do it. Good work. Again, guess Gray goes past his man. As he cuts inside, he goes down. And there is the starboard goal. But the over the bar. I think he, he rushed that shot. He could have taken a touch and have a better shot off. I had a coach one time and say, a man that height should never kick over bar when you're that short. And uh, keep it down. Keep it to your height. Here they come again, though. Opportunity played over the far side. The goalkeeper has to come for this one. He does well. He punches it away. Out of harm's way. And uh, lives to fight another day, as they say. But you can see the, the attacker veering down in goal. And uh, the goalkeeper, Rivers, doing very, very well again. Anticipating well. He might have actually injured uh, the space side attacker. And uh, the trim it is. And uh, they don't want to lose him. He's been an ever-present in the area, a real thorn in the sides of the defenders. But I think he's back on his feet and goalkeeper Rivers was there to see it wasn't intentional, it was just uh, part of the play and I think he just got caught in his follow through. Uh, but he has to step off just briefly and he seems to be okay. I think he's going to come back on almost immediately. Here's another one played inside. Another opportunity here now for space side. Good into passing. Again, they keep control. Nice composure here. Trip ball inside. Not the best pass, but they may still have possession. Copy time are trying to win it back, and they do. But this could be space side's ball. Yes, it is, because they took a deflection off the defender just as he was trying to run away with it. And uh, it just came off of his person. Unfortunately for Tyrese David there, he can see the throw in. Deep in their own half of the field. Carpe Chima. Uh, but it's good to see Speyside applying early pressure and trying to maintain that presence in, the, in and around the area of Carpe Chima. I think they need to do that and uh, try to get one more and try to kill this game off. And what they, they can ill afford to do is to just go back into that mood of just 
trying to go as individuals. The goalkeeper will come and claim this one again. Reverse, very energetic goalkeeper. Uh, but he's had a good game so far. In fact, you might have to say he's Karapichaima's best player so far in this game. Opportunity to get the ball forward. And uh, now they're trying to get it down. This could be a problem here. David, again, unable to control it. And there's an infringement. A great touch. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that truckman was fooled by it all. And then he had no choice but to pull his man and hold him back. But the referee was right there to spot it and to call the infringement. So two goals to nothing it is. Uh, goals again in the third minute by Jaheim Trim and in the 13th minute by uh, Jalon Toppin. Opportunity here now for Speyside to get this one forward. Burnett gets it down. Rivers again comes to the edge of his area to claim it. He's a real kind of energetic goalkeeper. He's a young man and he's doing well. Here they come. That's a great ball. Opportunity here. But what a tackle it is. Thomas is looking for an infringement. And although he got the, the call at the end of the day, the tackle actually played the ball. But he played the ball and the man. Uh, so the defender might be considering himself a little unlucky. The referee has seen it uh, in a different light. Yep. But he did play the ball to his in, in his defense. Um, he was uh, he was struggling a little bit. It was a nice ball played behind him. He had to turn and chase, and uh, the attacker was veering down on that goal uh, again. Kyle Holder showing his speed. Uh, but the tackle just in the nick of time. Another opportunity here now for Trotman. Can he? I think he's going to go to goal with this one. It, it's difficult. It's at a difficult angle. But it's close enough for him to maybe try his luck. Let's see what goalkeeper Jaheim Thomas could come up with if it's on target. Opportunity here now. The free kick towards the first post. And it hits the box stanchion and stays out. That was a better, a better, a better attempt to the goal with the free kick. Goalkeeper was beaten all ends, but just wide. Ball just went wide. Again, good signs there for Capri Chima. Good positive signs. Now they need to build on that. Here they are now. Brooks gets the ball forward, trying to run with it and uh, trying to pass it in. But that's careless passing. That's a strong tackle. You know, again, Brooks doing well. And the ball just played up over the half line. Now there's a problem here for them because sprinting away there is Trim. And the ball inside is a little bit of a... Well, he seems to have hurt himself trying to make that pass. Carpe Chima do not out of the woods just yet. And uh, Speyside still pressing. They have possession once again. Opportunity here. Good ball inside. Can they get it forward to Trim? No, it's intercepted. And... Uh, they're still not out of the woods because working his magic there is Gray. This is Jaheim Gray this time. He plays it wide and uh, it eventually goes into touch. It's still going to be Speyside's ball, but problems here now for Jaheim Trim. He seems to be struggling a little bit with some kind of an injury. I don't know if it's that same injury that he got when he collided with the goalkeeper. Yes, he seems to be suffering a bit. The ball played into him. Can he get it back to the thrower? Or can he get across? And he tries to. But that's good defending there. Good strong challenge in the end to get it out there, Humphrey. I think he's struggling a bit. He seems like cramp or something. I'm watching him. Yeah, it's he, I you think he's signal, signal to the bench. Maybe it's, it's, it's probably a little bit more serious than he thought it was. And you could tell when he, start, when he tries to run. His movement is being inhibited to some degree. So 2-0 it is. And a chance here now for Speyside to maybe tack on another one. Headed in or played in. And uh, the header is up. The bicycle kick comes, but it's a little bit wide. And uh, it goes behind. Not a bad effort. Uh, once again, Speyside uh, pulling out all the stops here. Trying to prize open the defense once more for that third goal. Uh, but so far... It's been proven to be elusive. Burnett with the bicycle kick. Here's another ball by Rivers, but it's not a, a good one. 
doesn't even meet the half line. In fact, none of his kicks are uh, meeting the half line. He's not a there's not strong legs to, to, to really get that range. And his, he seems to have a good technique, but he just doesn't seem to have the power in the legs. Ball played in. That could be danger here now. Ball played forward. It's, oh, how did that get there? Shot, and he doesn't score it. I thought for a moment it was a foregone conclusion that he definitely would have scored. Unfortunately for him, it was blocked by the defense. But Tuppin is down in the field again. Things. Take up uh, touch when the touch yep. has let him down. That's yeah. why I think he's suffering with cramps. Yeah, but it just seems to be overpowering him right now. And and again, it's the the amount of hard work these players have been doing in recent weeks. Um, there's not much downtime because coaches want to spend a lot of time with them in a short period, and this is kind of the results of that. And early in the season, and watch also down a little bit further up on the field. You, I think it looks like Jaheim Trim might also be down That's on stopping. that far side. That was stopping. Yep. So it's uh, it's not the best, and uh, I think they're going to make the substitution. Stopping in for yep. number nineteen, which is Williams. Actually, is it Trim? I think Trim came off. Trim. Yep. Jaheim came off and number 19 is on. Here's a, a, they're still on the attack though. And uh, Karpichama doing well so far to try to stop that one. They get a chance at the cross. And this would fall at the back post. And uh, he really had his man to his right. He headed in the wrong direction. direction. He, I he think he should have put it back to the last post. But he tries to put it to the first post. And he, and he really just needed to set up his teammate. Mates. who was right next to him there watching him grey. And unfortunately, not able to do it. Once again, the, the goal kick is a little bit errant. Goes out. So, uh, Nickel Williams is the man on the field. For Trim so far. And uh, Toppin battling there, trying to, to get there, but uh, that's a good screen. That's what we call a Vista Rama. Um, when he, he screened him off there, there was no way around him. And uh, the referee had no choice but to blow the whistle there, Robertson Thomas. Trying to find him again. And now, problems here for Speyside, but again, very Recovery. alert defending there. Doing very well indeed, and uh, coming out of danger, very composed, Miguel Burnett. And uh, Gray, back in the middle of the field, goes to Humphrey. Humphrey, back to uh, that man, Burnett. He does well, gets the ball forward. Chance, you know, for, for them to trim it, well, rather trying to get it away, trying to get away from him, the Jaheim Gray. And... Uh, not able to do it, but they get it back though at the back of the pub. Burnett again. All of a sudden, he's come into the game more and more on defense, but he's playing with the ball back there, which is dangerous. dangerous. Doing a bit too much in the back. And uh, here they come now, but they're doing a, a fine job with this one. Place it down that left hand side. George again on his way. Can he keep it in? And uh, the tackle comes and takes the ball. It's going to be a goal kick, says the referee. George thought he should get a corner. In fact, he's bewildered that he doesn't get a corner, but he was wiped away. And uh, but the defender did well to track him back, to track him down, and get in front of him to put in the challenge. Two goals to nothing. The scoreline here as we approach the hour mark. Another ball headed back inside, and uh, still trying to, to slip his way to that Rimple. And, but once more, look at that man, Burnett, back there. And uh, again, trying to bring it out in the most composed of fashions. A big battle on there. Gray losing out on this occasion. Now, Kaipi Chima trying to get down there to this left-hand side. Hold her out there. Great skill. Still Great going. Skill. Still going. There's a lovely little ball inside here. Now, can David finish it off? He... Loses out and then he played. I thought he saw the referee and he played it to the referee as one of his teammates, uh, but it, it wasn't to be. And uh, again, Karate Chima 
uh, living dangerously at the back. And, but they have another player who is down on the field. So too is space side. They have another player down. So this is not too unexpected because, as you say, these, these young muscles have been doing a lot of work uh, in, in recent days. I expected this. A lot of cramps will be stepping in in the second half mm -hmm. because of the work they have been doing in a short period of time. And I think Karib Chaima could be exposed at the back through the counter attack because they are pushing to get back into this game. And we are seeing this in the second half already looking to creep in into their game. It is. And, and it's, well, it's, it's good strategy on the part of both teams because the uh, Chairman know that they have to, to do something uh, to get back in the game. So they, they're obviously pushing hard. Uh, Siobhan Harding, their coach, no doubt Siobhan would be thinking we, we, we have to take a, a few risks, you know, just to, to see if we could make a game of it and uh, try our best to, to get a goal and, uh, you know, and, and hope you don't concede. But if you get one, then you can say, okay, fine, let's keep going. We've got a second one. And, and then you can look at it, assess, and say, well, maybe we'll back off now and, and settle for a point. But as it is right now, he has to do something uh, to get his team back in this game. And uh, Holder, again, continues to do well on the flank. And, uh, but once more, there, there is Modest. Remember, he went off earlier uh, with some kind of an injury, and again, he's cramping up, it looks like. And I think they're going to make the change this time around because um, for the second time, he has to be helped off the field. A lack of, lack of game time causes, causes a lot of cramps. A lack of fluid. As if they are taking in enough fluids. Yep. And again, it's, it's, it's a workload to it. And it's, it's, um, it's probably a very heavy load because both of these teams have complained that they've only started to work two weeks, three weeks, in some cases, you know. So, um, and, and it doesn't help because a lot of these players, some of them probably didn't even know they were going to get back into the institution, you know, especially for the, those repeaters. Um, some might be transferring to a new school and, and the paperwork wasn't, you know, wasn't completed. And so, you know, you look at these teams now and next week they might have a totally different outfit and diff different look. Here they come again. Problems at the back four. Uh, Carpi Chima just doing enough there to get that one away from harm's way. Uh, Khalil Wickham going over and uh, helping out. Another challenge, but A once strong again. Strong challenge. Yep. But space side still doing well. They're coming down the right-hand side this time. Early cross once more. The goalkeeper is there, but the defender they elected to take it. And... Uh, as a result, the ball is still in harm's way, still going in there. The referee blares, and he, I think he, no, he says no, no penalty. I thought he was going to give the penalty, um, but, but he decided against it in the, the end. But certainly, it was a tight one there. Modest, or, or rather, Gray was knifing his way into the heart of the defense. Uh, but you know where that all started, Sid? When the goalkeeper came for the ball and the defender headed it away from him. There was not much communication there. Yep. I think the goalkeeper could have called louder and, 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 and command the ball. Still going there. Pro problem there. Uh, David, uh, is David uh, being harassed? I think the, like, the referee has been uh, very lenient today, like he has leave all his calves home. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, uh, but I suppose he's working on the referee. Samuel is probably working on the, you know, this is the first game. Um, it's nothing too egregious, so, you know, he's probably just allowing it to go, as long as it, they, it's not malicious or anything like that. So a chance here now for Karpi Chaima. Can Trotman deliver the goods for them? He needs a good ball in the area. That's not a bad ball at the back post, but it's beyond everybody. And again, working out there is holder. Can he keep it in? Cannot. And the ball has gone over for a goal kick. He thinks it's a corner, but it's not. It's going to be a goal kick. So again, it goes to Nortz. But that looked promising. Sid yes, very promising. I think that was a great free kick. I think just needed someone coming from a little wider. This is where they seem to be exposed now. Um, 
Carpy Chima. Great ball inside. One ball is going to beat everybody, and he's on his way. Great opportunity here now. Can he finish it? Cuts inside. Still cut in. Still stricken to dribble. A bit too much. And a bit too much. Not I a bit. Way too much. Because he's forced away from the goal. And now he's trying to pass the ball inside. It might get there. Again, a brilliant pass. But again, Rivers. Very alert. This time his free kick is his kick is, is up, up upfield is a good one. Another opportunity here now for Capri Chima to come forward and uh, they do have possession. Great book there by David. Tyrese David goes for the return ball. Can he get it now? Looks a cut uh, across his man. Still the both of them are battling away for it. Still battling. David does well. Trotman has it now. He slips it back for David. He trails it across early o'clock and uh, it's played away. Now, this is going to be a foot race. Look at the speed there on uh, Williams. And Naps 7 uh, 1 up on St. Augustine um, after 50 minutes of that game. And uh, like I said, the, the, the field looked very underprepared yesterday so uh, I'm not sure what conditions the players would have been practicing in and uh, Napri Makal is no doubt looking to take all their frustrations from their loss to the heated rivals presentation last week and uh, they're well underway here now showing who's boss the defending champions or rather the former champions I should say 7-1 up on St. Augustine ball played forward again and uh, once more, you could just see the anticipation of the space side players. They just seem a little bit quicker than the Carpe Chima players. Yeah, yes, it seems a, a bit more sharper than, than, than the Carpe Chima players. Yeah, you can see that. Darimpul in the middle with the red boots, grey also. And uh, so it certainly is a good opportunity for them. Change here. Yeah. Number 10 is on. And uh, I think it's... Eastman. So Eastman is on the field, and the man coming off, it looks like... An, and again, it's players who are cramping up right now. A lot of players are having difficulties. Actually, the man coming off is Jaheim Gray. Gray. And uh, Eastman, Lennox... So he's on the field, so he gets his opportunity to showcase his talent here. I was just talking about the speed of Williams because he was leaving from way back and almost caught up with that ball uh, a short while ago there. So again, these are players that have you, you know, the tools to work with. The, the, you know, you can't coach speed. You know, just like you can't coach height, you can't coach speed. Players come with that. And uh, you just have to figure out how to, to, to use it. To use it at the right time. Yeah, and to, and to use it to your advantage. Um, another goal kick for Carpe Chima. They're trailing by two goals to nothing. It's not the, the hammering that St. Augustine is getting from Naparima at the moment, but I'm sure they would like to at least score one and, uh, you know, give their fans something to cheer about here. Yeah at the Ado Bolden Stadium. Ball played in, headed away nicely. Kapi Chima still having difficulty in the middle of the park, controlling the ball. Space side seemed so much more energetic. And uh, this man, Holder, is probably their brightest light over on that far side. Great ball played inside. This could be an opportunity shot right on the mark. Well and truly there. David got a good sniff at goal. And uh, just couldn't finish it. He got it on the wrong side of the post, as they say. First time they actually got behind space side. That was a great play, great pass, great one-time shot, but just needed to get it on target. And uh, Tristan Mitchup is the one who produced the pass. And now they're going to make a quick substitution. As uh, they take off, Robertson Thomas, and they brought on 
And they brought on the number 15. The so there was one Robertson, Kadim, and Kia. Or Kai. And uh, so it's like brothers. And uh, now it's 8 to, no, eight to 1 now in favor of Naparima College. So they have really put the, the foot down and uh, really starting to run away from St. Augustine in their encounter. Opportunity here for... Ball, this is a, it's not a shot really, but it looked like it was a shot. I think he was just trying to get it forward and uh, it went over. Uh, but when you can see the eight goals, it, it's psychologically, it, 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 you know, it's, it's not the best way to start a season. No, I think that is very demoralizing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to deal with to see that you receive eight in your first game and the game hasn't finished as yet. Yep, it's only like an hour or so gone. Kai does well. He's just come on and he's done exceptionally well. Here is uh, David trying to get something. Now, Speyside has to respond to this because this is a lovely ball. Now, the one in the inside was offside, but I don't think he was offside. This is problems here. If he squares it, we get some on. The goalkeeper saves it. Well, he it had the runners on the inside, inside. And he failed to do so, to, to use them. A good run. He timed it well. Look at it. Three yellow shirts in the area. And, and I think he, he had more time. He could have even pushed it closer. Yep. He went for glory there. And uh, it didn't pan out for him. Yeah. Williams. I think the striker didn't break his neck to get into the box. As he should. Right. I think he was too lackadaisical getting into the box. Well, let's see what they do. And um, I think they, they would really want to kill off the game here with a third goal. Um, but on with, with 73 minutes or so gone, 70, 72 minutes now gone in the game, ball headed up and, and not well connected, but it stays in bounds. And uh, Speyside with possession still stuck in, a, in the corner there, still trying to turn, his, turn out of it. Two players, two green shirts there, and uh, eventually it's taken over the line, so it's going to be... Uh, Goal kick once again to Karapi Chaimo. Two goals separating these two teams here right now. There is Kai, the, the young man who's just come on, still battling at Darimple. With a, he really should have played the ball, but he's still playing up with the ball. And uh, then his attempted cross is a poor one. So we saw this in the latter stages of the first half where everybody seemed to want to dwell on the ball and show that they can play. and uh, But it takes them out of rhythm. Take them out of rhythm and they're getting more tired once you have the ball on, onto their feet. To do all that to keep in the ball, it takes a lot of energy. And in this time, you need to try to conserve as much energy as you can. And uh, so I think uh, coming off is, is Dalrymple. And uh, he has been replaced by Johnson, Miles Johnson. So, can Speyside tack on another one, or will Carpi Chima get a goal? So far, the ball is just bouncing around in midfield. Nobody wants to take control of it. That might have been handled ball, but the referee allowed play to continue. And uh, there's a, a bad tackle that really should have been punished, but the referee says no. And well, now he says, yes, it is, because it was a, a lazy challenge, and it was a late challenge as well. And, uh, it, and it, it's coming from a man who has had a good game. For the young man, George, Sylvan George. Another free kick for Carpe Chima now. They need something urgently here. They have numbers up and they're playing three at the back. Eh? So any quick counter attack could leave them exposed. But it has to be quick. That's the operative word here. A quick counter attack. They had possession then and couldn't get the ball forward. George goes scampering forward again. Can he cut across his mind? He's on his way. The goalkeeper doesn't come. Still going. The tackle comes and that, the referee says, is not an infringement. 
But that was close, very close indeed. And uh, the goalkeeper Rivers playing with the ball, asking for trouble. Ball thrown in quickly. Can they get the shot off? They both of them left it now. That looked so comical because you knew what they were trying to do. And both men left it for each other. Neither one allowed uh, they then allowed the defender to come and take it. George was onside. I don't know if he thought he might have been offside. And now they're playing open football here now. It's just from one end to the next and uh, problems for them. Offside was the call, so it's going to have to come back. Uh, but Sid, I'm sure you would have been praying for a penalty then because the player was way in front of the defender. I thought that might have been a penalty, but who is me? Well, uh, that the referee was much closer yeah, than me. Very much closer. The thing is, this can run all the way here now to the far side and still going but it bounces over the line and it goes behind for a goal Res Gray has gone and against I think that was a penalty you know the, the, what, the only thing is that the ball was kind of far away from him and that might have uh, influenced the referee's decision but they're still with possession now an opportunity here now can he finish it off yes he and can that, and that's it number Top three in with a brilliant roll to finish it off his second of the evening in the 77th minute of play and then he, he struggles he goes down cramps yep so the young man who scored the second goal Jalan Toppin makes it three to nothing now and number 12 has left him on great finish into the far corner and speaking of goals, Sawa, 5-1 to one up. And Naprima College, well, they were up to this 8-1 eight, eight in that game. It's St. Benedict was 1-1, one, one, so um, a lot of good scores coming in here. It's 3 to nothing, And uh, I'm sure uh, Space Simons is thinking now, maybe we could drop the hammer here now and maybe uh, improve our... Goal, goal, goal difference goal as difference. much as possible. Uh, you know, again, coaches will always say when teams come to die, don't wound them. You kill them. And uh, when you have a team that you could run up the score on, you do exactly that. Don't labor. That's a ball played in, but once again, it's a careless cross ball. Uh, the attempt was an early ball, which is good. And... Uh, Good touch. Yeah, good control. Nice little ball there, Kai Thomas. But once again, Karapi Chaima loses out. And Speyside almost got another sniff at goal. Here they come again. Not able to control the ball. The, 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 the substitute will just come on. And he's just fractionally offside, offside. there. Uh, Gray. He was just leaning beyond the defender. And the referee's assistant right on spot with the flag so three goals to nothing now topping in the 13th and 77th minutes and uh, uh, trim in the third minute uh, the man who started the scoring for Speyside good header down that's a big man header getting it at the highest point and uh, playing it upfield still going again and uh, since he has come on uh, Johnson he has really looked the part. Space side at the back. No chance. Yep. <laughs> Not taking any, <laughs> any chances. Not back there. And uh, they're getting ready to make another substitution, it looks like. And uh, this is also part of the whole fray where you give players opportunities. Deontay Jack, it looks like. Is, is the man who's looking to come on. Not sure who he's coming on for. I think he's came on for Tuppin. So Tuppin who limped off with the cramps, yes. And uh, another ball played in. Now can they get there first? And you could see the attempt by George. He, he knew he had a teammate there. He was trying to feed him. Unfortunately, it was a little bit high. The defender was able to pick it up. That again, the referee allowing play to continue here. 
but a good defending once again by the men at the back for space side. Kai does well. He gets it across. Now they have possession. Can the captain Joseph get the ball in the area? Opportunity here to get it out, and they do get it out. Stopped quickly. Going in the other way now. Shot and goal way over the bar. And uh, pressure relieved, so to speak. And, and the space I could breathe. The cramps start to step in yeah. late in the game. Ten minutes to go. You can see the guys are, 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 are the fatigue is starting to step in and in, in, into the players. Well, here's the thing. You know, if you're as they say, if you're a thinking player, you don't want to do any extra running. You don't want to do any extra kicking. Nothing that will cause you to feel that cramp even more. So once you get the ball. It's one and two touch football you're playing. You're not doing anything else. He has another attempt. A lovely little ball played forward there. Just not able uh, to get it over to Holder. And Holder was waiting to punks, But the defender, once again, coming back. Here's Holder. He's getting ready to take the corner himself. It's a small man. Uh, but good skill. Plays the ball short to Trotman. Trotman cuts onto his left foot now. And he plays a nice little cross ball. But once again, the big fellas are back there for Speyside. And uh, they got this one out. The, the, the other attempt at goal is going to roll easily to the goalkeeper. He hasn't had much to do all evening long. Thomas, looking very resplendent in his red top. And his kick is not a good one, but it's tidied up by the defense and they're able to come forward with the ball once more space side three copy timer nil not a good ball gets a second bite of the cherry now can they make something of it and uh, eventually the defense does well to get it out of harm's way but they concede another throw in three goals to nothing as we wind this one down five one sour involved the carpet timer hoping to just get one Naprimo with eight so a lot of goals in, and some fixtures and, and that is always the case in early goings in the, in the, in the league some teams really can uh, hammer home their advantage Gray does well looks up sees that he has a man right there but he couldn't get it Kai again Thomas that young man who's just come on as a substitute has done very well for his team since coming on as the sub, I think I he replaced his brother. I think Quentin Brooks is having a, a wonderful game at left back here today. Yes, he too, uh, as well as um, I, I must say Burnett, uh, who we accuse him of probably overplaying sometimes at the back, uh, but he's so confident in, in his movement. I think it could be very detrimental to him in, in, in a much tougher team. So he needs to play less with the ball at the back. And it looks like coming on, it looks like Phillips has just come on. So Speyside making another change. They have opportunities. Lovely ball inside now. The goalkeeper is there. He's in some problems. The starboard goal, can he get a shot? The plate very unselfishly plays it back. He has a shot now. Brilliant. That's a great Brilliant shot. Brilliant effort indeed. Great shot. No chance. The goalkeeper had no chance with that shot. That's four to nothing in the 84th minute of play. And the man who's just come on, Lennox Eastman, with a rocket that flew in for the goal of the game. Great pass. Unselfish play. Unselfish play. Great touch again. Away from, from the defender. And across the keeper. Lovely shot. River Beautiful. Really <laughs> Rivers was had a good game. But he knew nothing about where that ball was going. Because the angle, the, the, the push back to the right, forced him to have to check back to his left. And then the ball across him now, um, asking him to go back to his right now, was a little too much to ask. So four goals to nothing it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
Russo non più. So again, another player. This player has been injured on uh, more than one occasion. He's had to limp off, uh, but every time he just seems to be able to come back uh, modest. And uh, uh, we understand it's 1 1 down in Maruga. Uh, Maruga and St. Benedict's. Here it is. And St. Benedict's getting their equalizing goal. And it's 1 1 the scoreline in that one. And again, uh, uh, another player limping off <laughs> because of the cramps. It's everywhere at the moment uh, where the players are, are feeling the pinch um, in this first game of the season for most of them. Sawa and QRC 5 1 there. 9 to nothing, 9 to 1 it is now said uh, in favor of. Naparima College. Naparima is taking full advantage of of this. You can see the difference in quality. Here they come now. This is where they run into problems every so often. Space side. They they know what they want to do. The execution sometimes isn't the best, and uh, they run into problems almost like that. And now we have an injured player down, and uh, opportunity to be playing. The referee is allowing them to continue to play. This could be another goal. And uh, the ball is played into the area. Does he get the cross? And he tries to return the favor, but it's not a good opportunity, a good effort in doing exactly that. He still has support. And uh, now the referee could attend to the player who has stayed down here. Jaheem Humphrey, it looks like, who is on the ground. And, uh, but... Certainly a, a, a tough opportunity for him. Number 12, it looks like, who's sitting on the ground there. And uh, it is Jaheim Humphrey. So he's getting attended to, but four goals to nothing, Sid. Uh, I think the trip back to Tobago would be a happy one. Uh, I don't know if I want to be on that plane right there. If I'm a, a, a regular passenger, it might be raucous going back up the road. <laughs> Unfortunately, I might, have be, I might have to be on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, those trips are always the best trips. <laughs> After you have a win, you know, guys say and do all kind of funny things. If you're on the other side, it'll be the most quietest trip you'll have. You'll have. Yeah, when you lose, you don't want to say anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but when you win... I've been on both, I've been on both sides. <laughs> Oh that remind me of when we came back from Bahrain qualifying from the World sure. Cup. It was so one of the most well. noisiest ship, <laughs> noisiest plane yeah. ride I've ever seen for for eight for over eight hours, yeah, ten yeah. hours. Even the president was having a ball in that. What, Max Richards, boy? Yeah. He and Jack Warner, they choose. couldn't believe it. Yeah, never seen nothing like that before. <laughs> it's like we're on a a plane ride, a plane <laughs> plane party. <laughs> and listen, I don't think. The, the stewardesses on that plane want to see Trini ever again in life. I don't think so. <laughs> I do not think so. <laughs> Boy, oh my word. I, I think they probably worked the hardest ever on that trip. Because everybody kept asking for something. Uh, it was just constant. You know? It was like that. <laughs> it was basically like that. <laughs> It was an amazing. I think they were from Tahiti because I think the plane was was chartered from, from Tahiti. Yes. Here is another board played in. Karapi Chaimo under pressure still, and uh, another opportunity. This could be another goal, and it is yes. simple. Five nil. As you come, yeah. and uh, I said when he came on, he was looking the part, and uh, so I'm not surprised that he was able to get his name on the score sheet. Johnson taps it in. And uh, makes it five to nothing now in the 89 in the 90th minute of play. It was just simple pass and move, simple football, pass and move. Miles Johnson, and that was great football. Keeps it oh, what's your own goal <laughs> of the defender? No, no, uh, I think uh, the defender tried to clear and he put it back <laughs> into the net. <laughs> uh, Johnson's claiming it, you know? yeah, and he's claiming it. <laughs> yes, and here is it again. Boy played in. You could see him control the first time. 
And here is the defender. Clearing it. Trying to get it, it bubbled up between the two him. of them. Yep. And uh, but he will claim it. So I think Karpi Chima has just given up right now. Yeah, the, the 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 well the five goals that we were saying think about St. Augustine. They got nine so far. In the ninetieth uh, minute. So in the 90th minute of play, it's five to nothing here. And uh, they're looking for more. Still good skill again, but look at the Brooks. energy. Look at the energy. And that's a tough ball because you're asking <laughs> young George to keep running. And uh, but he's back to win it once more. Does very well. And uh, they have possession space side. Still going. This could be problems here because he's leaving from behind his man. Almost caught up with him. But guess who is back there doing the hard work? Uh, the man Kai Thomas who just came on as a substitute. This could be his brother. Oh. Another chance. Ball played in there. And uh, eventually they give it right back to space side. And this has been a recurring theme in this game so far. Carpichama really haven't helped themselves and uh, they just give the ball back to the space eye defenders. Maybe they like the color yellow. They just keep to give it back to the yellow shirts. Here they come again. Another ball played forward. And this time it's cleared away, cleared into touch for a throw in to space side. I think space side central defenders has had a, a easy day today. Yep. But they've had a good day, that's the thing. They, they, they've had to do certain things. They've had to work to, 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 to do some intercepting. Uh, and they've done that well. You know, as we're talking about the trip home and how much fun that is, these space side players will actually have two trips. Because one is the, the flight or the, the boat ride back to Tobago. The flight. The flight back to Tobago. And the second one is from the airport. airport to space. The to space side. Side. Here they come now. Another opportunity. Can they make it six? Here is the defender doing very well indeed. He had to come across to do to make the interception that he did. Uh, but again, you could see him uh, really, he's hurting right now. Every time they tackle, uh, something is hurting. And uh, But that's what happens in this early stage of the season if you're not fully prepared. The kick, not a particularly good one, and uh, again the first start, but goal, another crack at goal, still space side with possession, keeping it, trying to do something with it now, and uh, they lose out. This is where when they get too cute, they run into problems. And this is After trouble. Place, yeah, and this, this could, could be, be trouble. Goal. Shot and too early. He took the shot a little too early. He could have waited the uh, match up. Tristan Mitchell, who came on as the substitute, uh, but he, he grabbed at the chance. And this is where Speyside is giving teams a chance, a sniff, by playing too cute mm -hmm. at the back. Yeah, they really need to be a, a little more purposeful and a little more clinical uh, with their, their finishing. And the boss stays in. I thought for a moment it would have gone, but guess who is holder? He is doing his bit. Nobody, no green shirt in the area to help out. He did so well to get the ball down the flanks and to get the cross in as well. Nothing doing, nobody home. He gets another one across, this time a lot further back. And once more, the control is not there. Ball given away, picked up once more by Space Side. They come forward again. And the referee says, that's that. Enough is enough. Five to nothing it is in favor of Speyside. The Tobago outfit making the trip to, to Central Trinidad and coming away with the victory. It's Speyside five, Carpi Chima East, nil. And I, I think Speyside has deservedly win this game outright. They have played much better than Carpi Chima. Uh, although I think some of their finishing has been left to desire but it is early in the season and i i will give them a pass today to see right. <laughs> i think mm -hmm. coming up with a much better opponent they'll have to be working much harder and do their finishing much better and i think that's to be expected at, at this stage of the the season many of them are, are, are probably now feeling their way back into the football rhythm and it's going to take them a while. Some of these teams might take three, four games. 
some, you know, they just needed to get this one out of the system, and then you will start to see the improvements, you know, as you go along. And that's a challenge for the coaches now, because with secondary schools football, as you know, there are two things at play here. These are students, so they still have to go to school. And then you get them after school, and but you also have to give them rest. So, you, you know, you, so it's a kind of balancing act, because they have another game on Saturday. You know, so it's a, you, you, you have to kind of figure out how you're going to massage and tweak what you're doing in order to give them an opportunity to recover in time and be able to produce come Saturday. And I think I think that will be very important. I think tomorrow should just be, for me, <laughs> a, a walk-through session to recover the muscles and prepare them for Saturday. Mm -hmm. Have one day of... Maybe play, for the maybe game, do some set plays or something. Uh, and Friday, you do some set plays. You know, get the muscle back into tune for Saturday. Yeah, that's that's always the the, the balancing act that coaches have to do because you know you, you you're tempted to probably try to work on certain things and certain systems of play, but you could do that maybe on the drawing board or and then walk through, you know, and and show them what is required, um, you know, and and allow them to. To, to get a feel for doing it because that's why you do as you say you know you have a, what we call moving set plays you, you build you just add on something and you add it into what you already lay down you know and you and you move you do different things um to get them up to speed and to get them to do what you want them to do but uh, you know i must say if space I has a good foundation they have a good base from which to work they have probably as much talent as any team uh, that, that I think we will see in the secondary schools league. I don't think there are going to be many teams with as many players at this level that we've seen from this space side team. Now, I haven't seen the other teams, so they may surprise me. But uh, it's going to be, I would be, if we do have three or four or five teams with as much talent as this one, we are in pretty good shape. And that, that, that is very important. And um, I'm glad what you have been saying, but the problem for me now with Space Side, they need to work a bit more harder and a bit m together to be a more cohesive team. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be more clinical, and, and not, not just in front of goal, but even at the back. When you collect the ball, you control it, you pass it, you know, and you move to get the, the ball back, possibly. Or in midfield, you come for the ball, you get a touch, you go again. But they've shown glimpses of that. You know, they, 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 their interpassing is pretty good. You know, their, their forward passing is even more impressive. The problem is, when you get tired, you, you don't want to lengthen your passes. You need to you keep it to short. Your passes. Keep it then, shorter and you know, simple. Yep. And, and, and this is when the game, you, you, you have to see some experience somewhere along the line. You have to pick up things very fast. When you are up, you need to calm the game and try to control, control the, the game, tempo, yeah. control the tempo, so you don't have to do all that extra running. And it certainly is, uh, a, as they say, a, a reason for the Space Side team to smile. There are five reasons to smile right now. And like I said, I would really wish to be a fly on the wall on that plane right back, or even the bus ride back up to Space Side this evening. It should be raucous and a lot of fun for, for these players because. Uh, I'm sure their parents and their family, their relatives back home who may be watching this uh, broadcast will be very happy indeed. And uh, I think all of Tobago should be happy uh, with this performance here today. And as Sid says, you know, it could get better because he feels that there's a lot more. We would like to think that there's a lot more that they can do uh, in terms of a, a cohesive um, unit uh, out there in the middle. So it's not... It's it's not a uh, it's it's not a, a, a the end of the road. It's just the beginning for them, and uh, so we just have to, to see how they how they shape up. I think Sean is downstairs with the coach from the Carpe Chima East Secondary, uh, Siobhan Harding. I think is one of his guests. So let's hear what he has to say. Welcome back and welcome to tonight's uh, post-game uh, press briefing here at the Tiger Tanks SSFL match at the Atabolan Stadium between Speyside High and Carbichaima East. With me, I have head coach of Carbichaima East. Coach, difficult way to, to start proceedings uh, today. Um, 
opening game of the season. Um, your boys would have loved to have gotten a better note, started with a point, but didn't go your way. How you felt about it? I felt disappointed, but we had to go back to the drawing board and come back again because we, we, you are short season this year. So we had to go back to the drawing board and come back and fight again. Coach Siobhan Harding, what was the process like in getting these boys ready for this season? There's been no football at this, at this college, this league, for almost three years. Um, there must have been some nerves, some anxiety, and then getting them physical ready as well. What was that process like? Well, my process was short. It was only five weeks now I started with the boys. And to form a team, it was difficult because, as you could see out on the field, we just didn't, and plus we didn't get some of them repeaters in time for the game. So. Looking at the match itself, um, you know, you conceded very early, so that would have thrown your boys off. Yeah. Um, what aspects of your game you taught, you know, that you hopefully would have gotten a bit more from the fellas in terms of adjusting to what Speyside brought in this match? Well, we could uh, just, if there, there was, there was, there was playing, holding the ball too much and trying to do too much with the ball. And Speyside was playing body football, body more, more than, um, than them and faster to the ball and we was too slow and complacent to the ball. As I mentioned earlier, it's early days yet, so there's a whole season to look forward to. What are, you gonna, what are you hoping for from your team ahead of the next match and some of the things that you're going to work on the training pitch as you try to come out and get your first points on the board? Well, for the next game, I, I'll go back to the drawing board and work with because some injuries in this game and all. So I lost some more players, so I'll go back to the drawing board and look to see. And it's a short time because Saturday we had to play again, so I don't go back to the drawing board and look to see what I can do next game with the players. Coach Harding, all the best to you. Good luck to you and your Caribbean team. East crew for the rest of the season. Yeah. Thank you. So that was, uh, of course, Coach Harding there from the uh, Caribbean team. East Secondary, and Sean has another um, guest with him. Um, All right, good. So we continue tonight's uh, post-game prep press conference with the head coach of Space at Hyde, Akko George. What a way to start your season for your boys, coming on the, over on, on the flight or on the boat to Trinidad and getting three points at the Atabolan Stadium. What are your thoughts on the way your boys executed things today? Well, three points is always three points. Um, Got to say um, congrats to the, to the guys. Um, the execution... I must say that <laughs> I don't know what happened, maybe the flight, but we didn't execute as, as well as, as I would have liked. But to get three points is always a good thing. And to not execute as, as I would like and score the amount of goals that we did, that is always a, a marvelous thing to do. Well, it's interesting to know that you're a former student of Signal Hill Senior Comprehensive, which historically are there known as the Tobago powerhouses. Is this a sign of things to come from Tobago for this SSFL season, your performance today? Well, we we at we at Spaced High School we always try to fly the Tobago the Tobago badge I should say very high. We pride ourselves in representing the the island very well, and I don't see anything that will make us deter from that. Let's go back to the match itself. What are some of the aspects of your your team's play that you saw that left you very encouraged and in a positive frame going forward? Well, the energy for one, the energy the, the way in which the guys took the goals. I must say I'm a bit, I'm pretty um. Um, I'm pretty cool about that. Uh, the execution, as I, as I mentioned before, I didn't really like the execution in terms of possessing the ball. We, we went from back to front by passing the midfield a little too much of my liking. Uh, we have to go back to the drawing board and remedy that because that is something that will be able to help us control games moving forward. So looking back on the game, three points is three points. You can't go wrong with that, but the execution, we sure have to go back to the drawing board and execute. All right, Akko, just to give the viewers a perspective of your team's preparation and your journey for this game, you're the away team today, you made the journey over to Trinidad to be here in Cuba, the Atabolan Stadium. You know, when did you all arrive and what was the preparation like for this trip? Because this was not just showing up at the venue for a game, it's actually a full, a full day trip. Well, the trip actually started around 6 o'clock this morning. The taxi that we, we took from the furthest part of the island left about around 6 o'clock. So it was a good journey, but... Um, in the dressing room, we, we relish these challenges, right? Coming to Trinidad always presents unique challenges, but 
we, we keep a family atmosphere, family vibes, and we enjoy the trip. We know that is, we, we come to play football, it's not really a joyride, but we try to make the best of whatever situation we, we get presented with. So you've heard it there from the head coach of Space and High, starting his campaign this season with three points on the board. They've made the journey over to Trinidad and they've caused a bit of an upset because Carpichaima East historically have been a good team in the SSFL Tiger Tanks League. Um, they have some work to do, but Space and High, they offer a great start. All the best to you for the rest of the season. All right, thank you. There from Sean Fuentes speaking to Aku George, the coach of the Space Side Outfit. Five goals to nothing. Once again, Trim, Jahim Trim in the third, Jalan Toppin in the 13th to make it 2 0 at the half. He again topping in the 77th minute to make it 3 to nothing. Lennox Eastman, the substitute in the 84th minute, and another substitute, Miles Johnson in the 90th minute to make it five goals to nothing. So that is the situation here on behalf of the entire crew, on behalf of Sid Gray and Ruskin Mark, thanking you so much for being with us here on Flow Sports and, of course, on Tiger Sports International. As we leave you from the Atto Bolden Stadium, the latest score here, it is Speyside 5, Carpichaima East, nil.